interview coming up with Red Plastic Bag today, Friday, November 26, 1993. Coming up in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Red Plastic Bag, you're a signature name in the cannabis business in Barbados and the Caribbean. I mean, I see you performed on stage already, and every time you come on stage, you seem to be filled with exuberance, and the crowd seem to be just spellbound. Is this something that's within you, or is it something you had to work on? Well, it's something I had to work on over the years. Um, and uh, it, for me, um, I don't think that I'm a natural performer. It, um, the last 10 years of my Calypso life, um, I've really worked extremely hard on, on developing you know, personality on stage and things like that. You had any influences? Well, yes, I, I, I've, seen, um, I've seen a lot of Calypso names perform. I've seen a lot of um, other artists perform too. And I recognize how important it is to, to, to get the audience in the palm of your hands. And that I'm still working on. Excuse me. What? <clears throat> Tell me, man. Go. When you have a topic in mind that you want to sing on, and you have made that decision, does the music come for us, or do the words come first? Well, um, both. Um, I work on both together because I think that you must strike a, a perfect marriage between um, the lyrical content and the musical content. I think that the whole. Um, uh, what you're seeing in the song comes along with, with a feeling and that feeling is manifested in the music. So I try to work on both together so that I can get um, a good enough marriage um, of the two. In Barbados, uh, on international scene, you hear of Red Plastic Bag, you hear of Gabby, uh, Griner, Ras Eiley. A few of the crop. No pun intended with crop over. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it because uh, uh, there are not much stars in Barbados or there are yet to be discovered superstars to take the international scene as um, you and the rest of mentioned did and continue to do? Well, there's, there's several Calypsonians in Barbados who are doing well. Um, it is unfortunate that a lot of them have not really broken onto the international scene. Um, but um, anyone who, who has been to Cropover would have um, recognized that in the tents there are several um, Calypsonians of excellent note. Are you shocked by the way that uh, dancehall reggae is taking over the Caribbean? Um, I am, <laughs> but I'm, I'm also pleased to see that, um, that we can strike that cross um, between reggae music and, and um, soca music um, to, to produce some music that, that the people um, love. Uh, I, I think that what has happened too with the, um, the, the, the fusion is that we are getting more young people involved. And I, I mean, in, in, in soca that is, listen to Calypso that is, um, because a lot of them have been, have been strained um, um, to the dub music and um, we are having them listening now to both. That, that reminds me of an analogy that Tony Cozier was making comparing to the, uh, the, uh, the imminence of basketball on TV and the youths maybe having a tendency to go to basketball and maybe cricket will suffer. Right. That reminds me of that. Yeah, definitely. Now, Red Plastic Bag, you've been out of competition for a few years now. Any particular reasons? Well, I, I think um, um, it's very important that I take a rest. I've been going um, for 10 years straight. Um, I, I need to take a rest. I think that um, there's a certain familiarity that, 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 that would come along once I'm there all the time. And it makes it more difficult to, to, um, to, to satisfy the people when you're there all the time. However, alas, yeah, I couldn't um, take part because my wife was pregnant and I, I, as a matter of fact, my baby was born on, on finals night in Barbados this year. And um, I definitely couldn't take part this year, but I'm hoping um, in, in, in the not too distant future to be back in the competition again. And they say a true race horse never loses his colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping to be back there again um, and, and hoping to do well. And what's your, how would you like to see Barbados' Calypso in the next, say, 10 years? Well, uh, so far I'm beginning to see um, quite an improvement um, in, in the last few years. But in 10 years' time, I expect to see Barbados' Calypso. Um, who knows, maybe to compare with Trinidad's Calypso. And with the advent of Eddie Grant now based in Barbados with his ICE record label, you think that can only help the art form? Yeah, Eddie Grant is doing an excellent job in Barbados um, for Calypso and is an artist as a whole in Barbados. And, and I think with him around, it, it, it serves well for, for music in Barbados. And before I go, I have to ask you this question. A red plastic bag, how on earth could a Calypsonian come up with that name? Well, it's, it's, it's quite um, um, strange to me that you didn't ask me that first. <laughs> because everybody asks me that, very red plastic bag. Save right? the best for last. Yeah, but... Um, when I first started um, Calypso in 1979, um, it started as fun in, in, my, um, in my district and I had to get a name. So um, 
but I couldn't find one. And one day I went to the beach, and when I came back from the beach, um, a nephew of mine looked at me and said, hey, you, you, you look like a red plastic bag, because I was all burnt in the sun. And I found it so funny, you know, and I said, you know, so maybe I should use that. And when I did, it, it really created a stir. Um, the color red, you have something to identify with, and, you know, you have something tangible, a plastic bag to the thing. And at home, in a national stadium, um, people wave their red plastic bags, and people dressed in red, and it is, it is a sight to see. One love. Thank you.